Hello, in this video, we are going to build a very simple pop-up menu feature using the Stimulus JavaScript framework. Let me give you a quick demo. So our application loads with this hamburger icon and there is no pop-up menu. When you click on the icon, it shows the menu and also changes the hamburger to a close icon. When you click close, it hides the menu and changes back to the hamburger. It's a very simple feature, but in the process of building this from scratch using Stimulus, we will learn controllers and actions, the Stimulus values API, and also how to manage state in Stimulus. So let's get started. So let's start with a very simple HTML view of our navigation bar. It's all static HTML right now. So if I click the hamburger icon, you can see it's not toggling. So let's uh, look at the HTML structure for this nav bar. As you can see, it's a Rails application. And I'm also using Tailwind for designing my views. If you are curious about how to build this uh, nav bar, I highly recommend you watch uh, a video series that Adam Vadan did. Adam is the creator of Tailwind and uh, I'll put the link to this video in the show notes so in the description but uh, this video goes in detail about how to build a nav bar using Tailwind. So let's get back to code. So we have a let's understand the HTML structure for this nav bar. So I have a main header element representing the nav bar. Inside that I have two div elements. The first div, it contains the logo and the hamburger icon, which you can see. And the second div is the static HTML for the menu. This is the menu. And we want to make it dynamic. So we'll start with creating a controller for our toggle functionality. And uh, in Stimulus, uh, the controllers go inside the app JavaScript controllers directory. I will create a new toggle controller because that's what the responsibility of this controller will be. So it's a JavaScript file. And uh, inside the our HTML view, we will use the data controller attribute to connect this header element to our controller. Okay. So we have data controller toggle and we have a toggle controller JS file. Let's start with importing the controller class from the stimulus library. Then we'll create our class. Our class extends from the controller class of stimulus. All right, let's save that. And the way stimulus works is you put uh, these data controller classes, uh, data controller attributes on your elements that you want to connect to your classes. And uh, when, uh, when the page loads, stimulus detects that you have a data controller class and it finds the name of that uh, attribute data controller toggle so it will try to find a toggle controller javascript file and it creates a new instance of that and it fires a connect method so which we can use to verify that everything is working okay so here i'll just log connected and uh, let's go back to our browser and i'll open dev tools so we can see the console all right now let's reload the page and it says connected so what we have done so far is we added a data controller toggle attribute which instructs sta uh, stimulus to find a toggle controller file and uh, connect this element to this class okay and in in our class we have the whole element available 
uh, as this dot element. So if I log this dot element, it will print the header element. So let's reload it again. And you can see we have the access, we have access to the header element here. Now let's get rid of those logs. Actually, I'll leave the connected. Um, now, the next task is uh, how to make this hamburger icon toggle this menu. So for that, we need to access this menu, right? We need to hide or show depending on uh, some state. But right now we are interested in accessing this element inside our controller where we will control its visibility. So, and the other thing is we want to, we want toggle to happen only when we, you click the button, right? So we need a way to connect this buttons click event to the visibility of this element. And in stimulus, you do that using the actions. So we have the button and I'll add a data action attribute on it. And in here, I'll say, whenever you click this button, I want you to find the toggle controller and uh, call the call some method on it. I'll name that method menu. So to repeat, what this means is find whenever you click this element on which this action attribute is present, whenever you click this, find the toggle controller and invoke the menu method on that. Okay, so let's add that. We just log something here. And uh, let's reload the page and click the hamburger. So you can see it prints, you click the button and it happens every time I click it. Okay, so now we have a way to listen to the click event on the button and we didn't have to uh, use the add event listener or any other JavaScript code. We just um, added a simple data action attribute. Okay, now we want to access this menu. How do we access that? So in stimulus, you do that using the targets. So similar to action, let's add a data toggle target. Basically the toggle is the name of the controller and we are marking this element as the target. And uh, we will name it menu. It can be anything, but the syntax is you say data, name of the controller and the keyword target and you name it whatever you want. So here we have a menu target and we want to access that inside our stimulus controller. And for that, we use the target API, which is like you have, you declare a static array called targets. And inside here, you just uh, access whatever targets you created. Okay, so menu is this target, so this element. And when stimulus uh, loads this class, it will just find, uh, it will find this element and create a value named menu target and assign this element to this uh, menu target variable. So for example, if I print console.log this dot menu target, that's the convention, okay? So menu target will refer to this element. So let's try that. I'll reload the page. And after clicking the hamburger, you can see I have access to for my menu target here. Now that we have that, the next thing is to toggle it. So to toggle the pop-up menu, we need to control its visibility. Actually, it's display. So we want to set its display to none if you want to hide it. And we want to set its display to block if we want to show it. So let's uh, start with adding a couple of methods, show and hide. If 
when we want to show we will set it set the display to block and when we want to hide it we'll do the opposite and set it to none okay and we want to call these methods on in, whenever they click the hamburger icon so in that's inside the menu method and for that we need to check whether the menu is open or not right now so for that we need a state variable we'll add that inside the initialize method which fires before the connect so let's set is open to true right now because we have the menu visible here so uh, inside the menu method let's check if, if the menu is open if it is open then we want to hide it so let's call hide if it is not open then we want to show it so let's call show all right so i think that's all we need here and uh, oh one more thing once we toggle the menu we also want to change the value of is open so it takes effect in the next click right so let's set is open to whatever its current value is and negate that all right so i think that's all we need let's refresh the browser and click the icon and you can see our toggle feature is now working as expected now there is one problem with the current design which you can see when the page loads our menu is visible by default which we don't want we want the menu to be hidden by default and when you click the icon we want to toggle it okay so let's get let's implement that so in our html we will set the menu to hidden by adding the hidden class so this hide this will uh, hide the element initially and also we will change the initial state to false to indicate that menu is not open right now and when you click it if we check if it is open or not if it is not open then we'll show it okay so let's reload the page and you can see the menu is hidden now let's click it and it adds it back and it works as expected now we have a working solution here we could stop here but uh, right now we are keeping our state in the controller and uh, stimulus recommends to keep the state in your html so the reason for that is uh, if you have your state in the html it, you can work with your html from anywhere so when the initial page loads your controller can access that if it if the html comes from an ajax request or a turbo stream or a turbo frame it will still work and your controller doesn't need to maintain the state so that's the benefit of keeping your state in the html it works really well with the turbo libraries okay so what we want to do is get rid of this this open variable uh which is the state for our controller and instead we want to put that in our html so how do we go about that first let's uh, add a new property called static values it's gonna be an object and it contains is open and it takes an object that uh, you can pass the type as boolean and the default value to false now we have that so we don't need this is open variable so let's get rid of that and the way you access that is open is similar to menu like you had menu and menu target you have is open and is open value so instead of is open we'll use is open value all right so that's the only change we need and our HTML doesn't need to change right now, but I'll show you it changes when I toggle the menu. So let's save that and reload the page. Okay, let's go to the elements section and inspect our HTML for the header. And you can see it toggled it back 
toggled it to visible and it also added uh, the a data attribute called data toggle is open value and it set it to true okay if i click it again it sets it back to false if i click it again it sets it to true and the nice benefit is that if you, so this was the initial page load now your html can, can come from a turbo frame request or turbo stream and as long as it has that attribute your turbo con uh, stimulus controllers will just work and the controller doesn't need to maintain any state so that's how you use the values api to manage state in your stimulus controllers now we are almost done. There is one small thing that I wanted to take care of. So you can see uh, when I click this toggle icon, it doesn't change the icon. Uh, it would be nice if when the menu is open, we had a close icon here. And when the menu is closed, the hamburger stays as hamburger. So let's try to add that. So for that, we will need, uh, so right now the hamburger icon is implemented as an SVG element. You can see it here. Uh, let's add a SVG for the close icon. Now, I won't add the complete SVG because the SVGs are just HTML elements and you can just add paths to replace the content. So this is the SVG icon for a close icon, SVG element for a close icon and it's hidden by default. So let's save that and reload the page. Nothing changes on the page, but if I remove the hidden class, let's see. You can see we also have the close icon so and they are part of the same SVG all right so let's uh, make it hidden now think about a way to toggle them dynamically so we saw how to access the menu item using the target right so we can do the same thing here so let's add a data toggle target equals hamburger and we will do the same for the close icon and name it close. So now that we have you add, marked them as data toggle targets, we can access them both in our targets API. So we can do hamburger and close. And the only thing we need to do is here is when we are showing the pop-up menu, we want to ham uh, hide the hamburger. And uh, show the close icon. And do the exact opposite of that. when we are hiding the menu. So when we are hiding the menu, we want to show the hamburger and hide the close icon. So with that set up, let's reload the page. And you can see I click the hamburger, it toggles the menu as well as adds the close icon. When I close, click close, it uh, reverts back to the hamburger icon. And I think we have a feature complete navigation bar. So I hope you learned something new in this video. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I look forward to your feedback. Thanks for watching. Bye now.